with infinite complacency, people went to and fro of the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, binning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. Before we get to the second portion of my chat with Debbie, this is, of course, part two of the Elemental Somerset UK. You can hear part one on Into the Fray, episode 311. This is a Patreon appreciation intro. So hello to new patrons, Shelby Lichtenthal, Dylan Clark of Creepy Unsolved, Martha Morris, Stephen Miller, David Oldfield, Deborah Lynn Spazoff, Mike Baldwin, Jim Caldwell, Mike Archer, Jessica Purcell, Doug Allman, Robert Bader, Rooster, Olivia, David Bridges of DB Scale Model Studio, and Edward Mitchell. Welcome over, guys. And Alpha shoutouts. Alphas are those pledging $20 or more per month over at Patreon.com. Jessica Brazell, Mike Archer, Chris Guerrero, Patrick Ray, David Otto, Matthew Lacewell, Chad Ralston, Ted Cheever, Jake Dressel, Charles Mann, Heather Stockwell, Brian Beloga, Steve Alarcon, Stephen Bashore, John, William Cornell II, Roy Daniel, Randy, Tyler DeMoney, Crystal Bowman, John Cavender, Sticky Soundzine, Karina, Eric Ribich, Josh Arthur, Andrew of Black Triangle Coffee, Maynard W., Azriel, Sean Kevin Jason, and Nightwing. So a huge thank you, of course, to all of my Patreon members. As you guys well know, it takes a lot keeping things running, and these guys are at the top of the list for the thanks of doing that means the world to me that anyone would spend a dime on me and the work that I put into Into the Fray. So thank you guys so very much. You can become a Patreon member by going to patreon.com and searching Into the Fray or go to any of the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and click on my link tree link. It will be in there for you. And without further ado, here is my chat with Debbie. Before we get going, though, I wanted to remind everybody that this is, in fact, your your second time around. So this is, you know, the Elemental Somerset UK Part 2, and Part 1 was uh, Into the Fray, Episode 311, and we talked about a essentially a predator-type being, you know, predator being the, the shimmery, sheer predator type being from the movie, guys, and then that was in and near your home plus there was other entities again in and near your home and i i went back and i listened to part of it and you also brought up where you you thought maybe it started around 1990 with that whole hike with your friend there was a strange situation where there was a voice being thrown that sounded like you but wasn't you and it really freaked your friend out and your friend never talked about it after that and has she still to this day never really wanted to talk about that situation that weird day on the in the woods with the hike uh no she won't she won't talk about it at all and um one of the things i wanted to update on is we actually went back there in september Myself and my husband, and um, that was very interesting, I shall say. Really? So, yeah, that, 
that's one of the things I want to update on. There's quite a lot on the path in the in Somerset, and there's quite a lot happening at home. So I sent you a video about the mug. The mug. <laughs> it was just that mug swinging backwards and forwards. I don't know. That is so strange. And I, I'll try to upload the entire thing to my website. I don't know if I can do that in the show notes. I might have to create maybe a separate blog post. And I will do that, but it, yeah, but just to bring that up really quickly, you just, you just videoed that in your own home a couple of days ago and sent that to me. And it is very strange because it's just one mug and it swings for, uh, oh, I had it written down. It was a uh, two minutes or two and a half minutes. And then you physically stopped it. And I'm kind of going, I why are the other ones not swinging at all? There's no movement on any of the other mugs. No, no, and I just heard like a scuffling, like clunky noise, and I went into the kitchen, found that, and then just grabbed my iPad and just filmed it, and I filmed it for three minutes, just swinging, and it was just, it was just another one of those things that's happening. <laughs> So, yeah, did you want to start? Where did you, would you like to start with uh, the updates? Would you like to talk about where you went back with your husband to that original hiking trail? Or yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that seems fine. So um, this is in Norfolk, up, right up in North Norfolk, near the Wash. So it's about, I don't know, 15, 20 miles from the coast. And it's an area that, is owned by a big estate but they they open hundreds of acres for people just to wander around in and there's trails through it so we went back the only thing that had changed in the intervening 20 odd years was that they now charge for parking which was like really so we parked and went down the same trail and it felt slightly heavy. And I took a path that we usually took, which is off the main trails. And we were probably the furthest you can possibly get from the car park, about four or five miles, I suppose. And it really, really started to rain, hammered down with rain so much so that it went through every layer of clothing you know that when you are so wet you can't get any wetter dripping off your nose you just think okay so we were squelching back up to the car there was nobody else because everybody else has gone that bit it's too wet but we were just way too far back in the woods to make a dash for the car and we were probably came back up the hill and we were probably about half a mile from the car park and I'm in a really like grumpy mood at this point because I'm cold and wet it's still raining and I heard a noise off to my left and I turned to the to the left and a figure stepped out from under an oak tree um I'm five foot seven and I think they they were about five foot and they were all in shades of brown so it was a male it really really reminded me the sort of like the face really reminded me of you know the character on the mad magazine yes like the boy with the freckles really reminded me of him he had sort of al albany hair quite a square face all the clothing was all shades of brown and I thought originally when he stepped out and he made a noise so that I would turn and look I thought it was like the gamekeeper or one of the grounds people and they were going to have a go at me because I wasn't actually on the path at that point we were just taking the shortest route back to the car and I was going to have a go back if he if he said you know get back on the path I was just going to let rip but he stared at me we made eye contact which I just don't know why they do that but made eye contact and then he turned
turned round and as he turned round and headed back into the ferns and the woods, he sort of changed into a deer. It was really, really weird. So his back end became furred and like a deer skin and he just disappeared off down into the woods. And how far away from you was this? It was probably 20 feet. Oh, gosh. Very close. Close. Did did your husband see him? Close. No, didn't see him at all. Mm. He asked why I stopped. Said, what, what, what are you looking at? Why, why have you stopped? And I said, did you not see that man? Like, no. Did you not see that man? No, no, didn't see him at all. So, don't know what to make about that. Is it one of those woodland elemental? Is that the original thing that we saw that I heard in the woods 25 years ago? This time I saw him. It was a, probably about 100 yards from that original site so i don't know absolutely do not know about that it was really it was just the fact that he he sort of morphed he he did this sort of turn and drop and as he turned and dropped the back his his back was was the back of a deer it was really really strange i can't remember if it was dark or anything like that you, you know or quiet because it was just raining and I was just wet and I was just lumpy. Don't know. The only thing I can think is it it, it was that thing and it recognised me or it... I almost think that the things that are happening is once they happen to you once, they, it almost marks you so that... that, that you see these things and they recognize you the more the more that happens the more I, the less i understand but but there's sort of some foggy sort of ideas happening yeah really strange and that, uh, that actually back. sorry real quick that actually would kind of fall in line with the original experience with your friend hearing your voice mm-hmm. and you had a separate experience where there was something in the brush, but you never saw it. So if it was that, if no. this thing had been the size of this deer or turned into the deer, whatever we want to call it, then he could have easily been in the brush all those years ago and you never would have seen it because it would have been that size. Uh, I mean, unless it was in that more human form and crouched down, of course, but uh yeah, I encourage everybody to go back and listen to 311 where she talks about this original experience because it was very, very creepy. It was creepy. That was creepy. That still gives me the creeps. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. Ooh. Just hear, We were both hearing different things and we both thought it was the other person mucking about. Right. And it was, it wasn't, it wasn't at all. Um, yeah, not nice at all. Uh, we went back a couple of, I suppose about a week later, on the to the, the same wood in Norfolk, and there were just a couple of patches, just almost as though they were cones of silence. So you could, you walked on a path, and the path seemed to be longer, and you entered an area of, Silence, and there were two distinct patches. And okay, so these two patches were they close to where you saw this uh, this elemental being, whatever we're calling that? Plus, is it close to the original experience place uh, from yeah, the nineties? Within about, I would say about a quarter of a mile. Oh, that's all very so close. There was only <laughs> one one patch of that woodland that seems to be have these things in it Uh, but I just I don't know what they are I really don't you know are they just attached to certain trees in the wood are they attached to certain areas I don't know really don't know at all 
Well, and we did talk in episode 311 about you, of course, obviously you're sensitive and it sounds like your husband is, is kind of not right. Uh, he did not see this being man turn into a deer. Like it just didn't even exist to him. Right. No, no, didn't see it at all, but he's starting to see things in the house and he's, He's seen things on the path in Somerset. That's been that's been really funny at times. Do you want me to go on and talk about that or yeah. anything else about I, Norfolk? Oh uh, no, yeah, go right ahead. So the path in Somerset, basically, it is it's it's a path that cuts across a field and. We tend to like it as a walk and part of, you know, a walk. We'll go along the path and go around the field and then, you know, do a big loop. And it's a really good place to pick sloes and blackberries and all this sort of stuff. It's not really used by anyone. And we had, that's where I think this first predator type thing that we had in the house came from. Because we had a thing where there was a portal opening up and I could see this portal so we after we chased the predator type thingy out of the house uh, we went back for a walk and this was midsummer it felt really 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 dark it felt quite threatening and quiet and as we were walking along, it got darker and darker. And I could see shadows at the end of the path. And one of these shadows just detached itself into a, like a, a shape. But I sent you a picture and I was trying to just quickly, really, really get it out of my head what this looked like. It was like a, Almost like a paper paper cutout mm -hmm. of of a, a 2D shape, really, really black, like jagged uh, holes for eyes and a mouth. And it stepped across the path and it stepped in this really sort of like challenging, you can see me, I'm going to step right out into the middle of the path and then I'm going to step to the other side and there were another one on the original side of the path. So I carried on walking and I thought, I'm a sort of person who will, who likes to find out how things work and what's happening. So I carried on walking and I walked through the middle of them and I walked through them with my husband and turned around and walked back. And these things, were either side of us and behind us and they were flanking us coming out of the path. Now, halfway down the path, there is um, a group of hazel trees and there's some holly bushes in front of them. When we walked down originally, it was just hazel trees and holly bushes. And when we came level with them, coming back down the path, the holly was a wall of holly as far as you could see, up as high as you could see, almost like a, an illusion. And we both stood there going, that wasn't there when we walked down 10 minutes ago and now it's there. Um, and we were sort of whispering and like saying, I think there's something behind it. And and. I didn't say this at the time to my husband, but I could see a big eye staring back at us and it was not nice. It, it really wanted us gone. Um, we got back into the car and my husband said, Oh, we were, we were being flanked there, weren't we? We were being escorted out and I told him afterwards what I could see and <laughs> he was quite like, well, why did you make us walk through the middle of them? Oh, because I wanted to see what they were. So that was quite challenging. And that was a, a 
these figures were black, really, really dark black shadow. Would you would you call them shadow figures or not? That's what they were, and they were almost guarding this center whatever was behind this wall of holly so the next time we went down everything was back to normal completely back to normal the holly was back to its original shape you could see through it see the hazel trees see the field beyond didn't see them again i saw the shadow figure on that car about three days ago and it just sort of peeked out and peeked back in just to see who was there and who was on that path. It, it, it can get really, really weird on that path. And it's sort of starting to spread out onto the field. We were, now I wrote the dates down actually, just so, just so it was April, a couple of weeks ago, beginning of April, we went down the path and then we were walking around the field and we heard a sound of a of a a bird, but it didn't sound like a bird. It sounded almost musical. And halfway around the field going back towards the path there was there was um some may you know like hawthorn bushes and other trees and things like that and there was this in addition to this sort of musical tinny bird sound there was tapping on one branch of this hawthorn tree and it was moving no other branch or tree was moving because it was it's been really sunny and warm and there was tap 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 we both heard it we both watched it we carried on walking after watching it for a few minutes and then that's when my husband said to me what was that little monkey like creature thing doing in that tree and he could see like a little two foot purple brown skinned monkey like creature. I could see something that looked like one of the are they dwarves from Gringotts Bank in Harry Potter? Mm-hmm. It looked like that. It had grey skin and like ears and it wasn't very nice. And it was just it was making a point that it wanted us to know we were there. It was there and it could see us. On that same walk, we then had finished the walk going back down the path and the holly was starting to grow again. And we'd walked past it about 20 minutes before that. So it seems to change and it seems to... It's not there all the time. It, it it wants you to know sometimes that you're there or you're not, or, or it's not. And then yesterday, this was yesterday afternoon, we, we had a it's bank holiday, so nobody was at work yesterday, and we went out for a walk again. It was myself, my husband, and my two, two daughters, and we finished off the walk in that field. And we were just wandering around looking for four leaf clovers and having a look at the, the, you know, the sky and everything, just enjoying a walk. And I shouted over to my youngest daughter, just called her name and said, oh, come on, we're, we're, you know, should we go home? Should we go home for lunch? And she looked up and I heard her name called. She heard her name called. From behind her in the hedgerow, and it was a low sort of, it was a male voice that called her name, and it sounded quite low down to the ground. And it it, it called 
her given name, so he called her name Olivia, which is her name, but we had spent the entire day and we usually call her by her nickname. So I had actually said her nickname, shall we pack up for lunch? So I actually said Wiggy, which is her nickname, would you like to, shall we go, go and get lunch? Which makes me think these things know who you are and know where you are because it gave her given name and we had just used her nickname. Mm, okay, that's creepy. That has given me the utter creeps. It's made me feel really... Um, I'm getting quite cheerful now. It's made me feel really, really like threatened that you know who we are. You know that the the name that we've been using out in the field isn't her given name. Right. Is it? That's that's quite scary, isn't it? The, yeah, that is. Uh, that's getting really personal, in fact. Uh, and you probably don't really call her Olivia that much. I bet you use her nickname, in the, what, 99% of the time? I know I do that with my daughter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's, she's Wiggy or Wigs. You know, that, that's what she is. You never, when you do that, you never use their given name, do you? Unless no. they're in trouble. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, look at your bedroom. <laughs> exactly. No, that's getting very personal, and I'm I'm so sorry. I that would be very upsetting to me as well. I just I I find that really really upsetting. Um, that's that scared me completely, and it was a male voice, and it sounded sounded far off, but near. It was really really weird, and it was behind her, and she heard it too. I thought you called my name. I thought I was in trouble because you said my name, name. Like, no. That's, it, well, it, it, it does make you think they know exactly where you are. When she realized, though, it wasn't you, what did she say about that? She wasn't happy. She She's seen the things in the house, too. She's. We had a conversation this morning about it and she thought it was me she thought one of us had actually said her name name she didn't realize it was behind her and at that point she could hear crying as well like a like a cat or a or a baby like a really like small kitten crying and so she's like oh. I thought I, I would have to look for the cat. That's what I was going to do. I was going to go to the hedge and look for the cat. Oh, gosh. I'm so glad she did. Yeah. Oh, they're trying to draw her out there? Yep. I'm so glad she didn't. I'm so glad we were going back to the back home for lunch. I really am. Yeah, does she, like, does she go out there by herself? No. No, none of us would. Yeah. Uh, Debbie, uh, zipping really uh, quick back before I forget, can we zip back to this whole, the holly thing? This is fascinating how the holly just seems to multiply and grow within minutes. This eye, you said there was a huge eye. Was it staring at you from the other side of this holly that had grown while you were on your walk? Yes, and it how was. And it it was it was about the size of a tennis ball or a baseball. Mm, it was gosh. like a really big, and it was probably about six inches in front of my face. And it, you got a feeling of absolute hatred from this this eye. It was look, it was watching us stand there. Pointing at the holly, sort of saying, that wasn't like that before. Was it a humanistic eye or more animalistic? Animalistic. Oh, mm, goodness. Not that a human eye that big would be any less terrifying, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> now that I've said my goodness, I'm thinking either one 
would be horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. It it felt threatening. It felt as though if we stayed any longer, it was going to get worse. It it felt menacing. It really did. And it, it can change. You know, one day it will be complete. It will just be a path. Nine times out of ten. But when it gets as though there's something happening, you can feel it. You can feel like a bug starting and it gets quiet. And it, it seems to be moving out into that hedgerow. And yesterday, calling her name, it's that that completely um that scared me and i'm like i said i'm sort of somebody who wants to find out and wants to know what's going on uh you feel like you not sure that you want to and is your daughter, uh, and I don't need her exact age or anything, but is she in her teens or her, you know, 30s or what? what's her age? She's an adult, so she's 21. Yeah, I would, I would, uh, I'd be right in your boat. You know, mama, don't mess with mama bear. You know, it, when, <laughs> when the kids start getting dragged into things, it's completely different. Yeah. Oh, yeah, completely. And. She was not happy and we were talking this morning about it and she feels a bit sick. She feels sick about it. Mm -hmm. Nobody goes there on their own because you don't want to. Well, and you mentioned that she has seen things in the house. What has she seen? Um, So the house. Whatever has happened has drawn a lot of things in. So the, when we chased the the sort of predator type thing out of the house, we had a summer of just about everything you could name. And it tailed off. It tailed off for about two days before Halloween because I was getting to the point where I was thinking Halloween is going to be absolutely awful but it it tails off to nothing at Halloween almost as though these things had something else to do somewhere else to be and it's starting to ramp up again so we had ghosts and we've got there's a man in a boiler suit by the front door uh he's an old man with curly gray hair we were both describing him this morning and he and he looks in the window. There is a man in his 30s who walks up the driveway. And both myself, my husband, and my daughter have seen him. He always wears a white shirt. There is somebody with a green jumper who looks in the window at the back. So that's the ghost. We've got a little black, we call it a house elf because we don't know what else to call it, but it looks like a little black cat and it, you'll find it, you, you'll catch sight of it, blink and it's gone. Everybody in the house has seen it. It like sitting on the uh, top of the freezer and scares the life out of you when you just want to open the door and it sat on the top. I had quite bad COVID in uh, February, so I was ill for most of February with COVID, and I kept on finding it sat at, at, at my feet. It been it runs around upstairs. I'm not sure with the the that was what caused the mug to swing because it 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 scuttles backwards and forwards i was in the house 
I tend to work from home on a Friday. So I work from home with a computer on a Friday. And I was in the house probably six weeks ago. So I was the only person in the house working away at the computer. And we've got three cats. And they it was a nice day, so they wanted to go out. I was stood by the front door. And they, I could see all three of them. There were two cats had gone straight outside and were sat on the doorstep and the third cat was half in and half out and then there was a scuffling sound behind them and so we've got where the front door is and there's a room and then there's sort of like um almost like a utility area and there was like a scuffling noise there they turned to look at it I turned to look at it there was nothing in sight and then there was the unmistakable sound. If you've got cats or dogs, you'll know this sound. Of it was unmistakable sound of a, a an animal jumping down off a windowsill or a bed upstairs. There's nobody in the house that could make that sound. All the cats turned to look at the top of the stairs at something that must have appeared there. I couldn't see anything at all. But then they all disappeared into the garden and wouldn't come in for about an hour and a half. Mm. So I I wonder if the, the elemental has come back in at some point and that's what they could see or hear. But it was it's that sound you can't that's an unmistakable sound if you have a pet and they jump down off somewhere you can hear it can't you yeah and from the sounds of it it jumped down from wherever it was and then would the would the Mm -hmm. timing be right if so if it jumped and you don't know where it jumped down from but was there a few seconds between the jump and then your actual cats looking up at the top of the stairs as if something had jumped down and taken the time to walk to the top of the stairs? Exactly. Exactly that. They turned and looked in the time, in the time it would have taken one of them to have done exactly that action, jump down and go to the top of the stairs. Mm. So that seems to be here. And so Olivia, when she's in the house on her own, will just put earbuds in and refuse to look at anything Aww. or hear anything. Really? She doesn't want to hear. She doesn't want to look. She doesn't want to see. We were, when we were away in Norfolk, she almost called us back because she was, the first day that we were away, we've got gravel in front of our front door and then stepping stones and she was she'd come home from work and was walking across the stepping stones and could hear crunch 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 of gravel behind her so she just shot in the house and shut the door and we need to come out again and I don't blame her actually I really don't blame her we've both seen things on the roof I've seen there was another like sketch that I did and it was it was just this big that's why I won't look out of the those are the our bedroom windows my bedroom window and I won't look out of the bedroom window anymore because of what I saw looking in the bedroom window uh it was a black shape with really big eyes and I, I think the eye height would have been at about six foot. It just scared the life out of me. I went into the bedroom and saw that black shape in the dark. I can't look out there anymore. I've seen just really, really um, short glimpse of a pale face and black, wet hair, wet looking hair, no wet hair, no, I don't know that, wet looking hair, 
looking over the edge of the roof as I was going in the house and my daughter seen the same and it was just momentary and then gone. Uh, there has been, there was a man in, I can only describe as a man in black standing on the driveway of our neighbour. Our house is is it's a it's a funny house because it's it's quite old and it's quite quirky and so the front door is at the side then quite a lot of the rooms are at the back so the only place that you can see into the house is from my neighbor's driveway and we all sat down having a meal after all this was happening, I looked up and there was a man, very pale, black hair, slick back, suit on, shirt and tie. Again, we made eye contact. I have no idea why they do that. And it was just a look of pure hatred from this person. I thought initially that oh my gosh you know the neighbor's going to get the the jehovah witness knock on the door and i looked down and then up and the person was gone i saw my neighbor about 10 days later cutting the hedge on the driveway and for his head to be at the same height of the person standing on the driveway looking in at me he was stood on the back of a pickup truck. So this person had to be standing in midair. Now this, um, zipping back really quick again to the the bedroom window that you won't look out anymore. Yeah. The, the black shape with the big yeah. eyes. Can you mm-hmm. identify if this was the same? I know you only saw one of the eyes in the head, in the holly. But is it the same thing? The same eyes? Uh, the same size. I can't tell you if it was the same thing because the eyes, it was dark. It was in the middle of the, you know, night. It was right. like 10, 11 o'clock at night. And there was just a black shape. And these big eyes were sort of, were sort of, they were almost glowing. They were they were white and almost glowing and looking at you, but they were the same size. Mm. And six feet up. Yeah. I won't look out there again. I don't blame you. No, I mean No, the, I don't want to. I don't look out there. This phenomena is able to I mean, manifest in so many different ways. It's stunning. It's it's uh it it's it can be quite scary at times and other times you just get annoyed with it and other times you think it's funny. So it did a thing just after we got back from Norfolk, so this was the beginning of October, my neighbour who had the the man standing on their driveway knocked on the door. And she said, did you find the parasol? And I was like, well, no, I got home after dark last night. So, no. So, went and had a look in the garden. And they had tied the garden parasol, our garden parasol, up with rope, sort of trussed it up and left it on the the grass for us. And she was really, really worried. And I asked, and I was like, no, was there was there a problem with the with the parasol? And she told me that while we were at work and there was nobody in the house, they were cutting and stacking wood. So in their garden, and they heard a noise, and they watched the parasol go straight up in the air 
hold for a few minutes, do a 90 degree angle turn to go across their frame line, hold again, and then go straight down and drop on the ground. And they both watched it. And they, she kept on saying, it was so strange. It was so strange. It was so strange. I don't know what to make of it. And what was the husband saying about that incident? Oh, oh, the husband, he doesn't, he's very, he's very quiet. He won't say a word. He'll just go, mm. <laughs> They both saw, thought it was strange, though, I think. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. She was, that's, a, that's a sort of somebody playing, isn't it? Well, and as you said, it it seems to relish the fact that there are people watching, and they know that, and so they're just kind of making a show of things. Yeah, yeah, but why? Why would you do that? And then you just think, oh, just stop being an a-hole. Just stop it. That would be nice, yeah. I mean, I don't recall if we talked about this in the in 311. I, I didn't listen to the in, entire thing back, but... Did we cover, you know, do you talk out loud to these things and tell them they're not welcome? Have you tried that? Do you think that would do anything? I have. I have. With the mug that was swinging a couple of days ago, I said, are you going to stop that? Right. Are, are you going to slow down now? And it, you know, it didn't. I have got annoyed and just said will you just stop I you know then you just go oh yeah ha 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 very funny I don't know whether it likes being spoken about or whether it does things to gain attention I think the little black thing that we call a house elf is slightly more protective which is why it was I was at least four times I looked down and it was sat at my feet while I was really I really couldn't breathe at all so it was just sat there and then other times it seems almost as though you are its possession so I don't like my head being patted and I don't like my hair being picked up and stroked, both of which has happened. Once when I'd gone to collect the post from the end of the driveway, and I was walking up the middle of the driveway. So, like, no other hanging trees, nothing at all. The nearest thing that could have touched my hair was probably, um, I suppose, six, eight feet in either direction and something touched the top of my head stroked its way down the back of my head and then lifted my hair up it's also done that while I'm driving don't do that when I drive one it makes me wobble all over the road and then for the next 10 miles I'm thinking I've got a bloody spider sorry for the word I've got a spider on my head and I don't like spiders at all I'm definitely with you on the spider thing and the fact that you're walking in the middle of the driveway with no branches anywhere to re recreate such a no. thing, which it couldn't probably do. Anyway, uh, there, when, when were these touching incidents? Were these, have this, has this also been spread out over this entire time or are these more recent? Um, they've been from, from sort of the summer and then the last one in the car was about two weeks ago. So, so it seems to have been fairly constant. Yeah. It was really funny at Halloween that it all just drained away and it was almost as though all this stuff had other things to get on with and and, you know, we don't need to be here because this is where we are normally. I wonder if it knew somehow that, you know, because you had had this inner dialogue about, oh, Halloween is going to be the worst. I mean, that is 
when you're talking about mm-hmm. times of the the year and the seasons, you know, that's when they say the veil is thinnest and when the stuff is really going to ramp up. So you had this dialogue with yourself about, oh, this is going to be terrible because it's already so active. And so it, it's almost, I wonder if they're just kind of, we're messing with you saying, well, see, see, Debbie, you're not right about, about us at all. See, we can take a break too. And then we'll come right back though. Don't worry. Yeah. And it, I wonder that it, it, the more it goes on, the less I know. And the, you think you've cracked it and, or you think you've got a slight handle on it. I won't say cracked it because I have no idea what's going on. And then it something else happens completely differently. I wonder with uh, yesterday in the field was was sort of because it knew that I was going to talk to you and talk about it. It doesn't like being talked about. It doesn't like being um, spoken about, I think. Yeah, which is worrisome because here we are, assume we're hovering around a year later and we're going to be, we're, we're already an hour in talking nothing but about them. Yes, I, I'm sat at the front of the house that we very, very rarely get anything happening. I'm not anywhere near where the most of the stuff happens. I've made sure of that. Would you be able to describe what you call your house elf a little bit more for me, because I do find it uh, fascinating and a little bit uh, scary, of course, that when you were that sick, that that's when it decided to uh, come in closer to you. I mean, I think that maybe you're probably right about that. It's, it does seem more of a protector than the other entities, but can you describe what that little guy looks like as best you can? Okay, so it looks like a little black cat without ears, and it doesn't have a tail. So it looks, and it's smaller than most cats. So it looks like a little black cat. It's got little round eyes. It's got fur. It was sat so close to me, it was actually touching my feet almost every single time I saw it and you catch it out of the corner of your eye and a couple of times I've thought that we've got two black cats we've got two rescue cats and they I've seen all three together the cats aren't bothered by it so I've seen both of our cats asleep and this thing walked past the two black cats asleep I've seen it at my feet, I've seen it up in our bedroom. Um, I've seen it, it came out from under the bed then. And that, that gave me the creeps anyway. I'm a bit sort of like, ooh. I've taken to almost sleeping. So I'll, I'll find myself sleeping curled up in a ball with my hand cupped under me so that nothing can hold my hand or nothing can grab my hand. Have you had that happen where something touches your hand? Uh, yeah, yes. And I didn't like that at all. And it woke me up. I had um, I had quite a few dreams of... When we, ha- when we had the original thing in the house and we chased it out, the, the week after that, I had a series of dreams where there was a wolf out in the garden and we don't have wolves in the UK it was getting closer and closer and closer to the house and then it 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 managed to get through the bedroom window leapt at me and I woke up feeling as though something was holding my hand which I don't like thank you (laughs) So, um, something else really quickly, because you brought up the fact that you've seen mm-hmm. your, what you call your house elf with your two rescue cats and they, they really don't mm-hmm. react to it. So going back to whatever it was that jumped off a bed or a, a windowsill, whatever it was, 
and then walked over to the top of the stairs. The cats did immediately react to that, and they were obviously looking at something. So I'm thinking yeah. those are two completely separate things. It sounds like whatever was jumping off ledges or beds and then at the top of the stairs was not your house elf. Uh, that's a good point. That, that, I didn't think about that, but, but all three cats, looked at the top of the stairs and turned tail and basically legged it into the garden. So I was like, thanks, guys. Yeah, and Yay. didn't and you said they didn't come back in for uh, over an hour. So, yeah, it sounds like no. that was something completely different. Who knows what that even was? That's not good. Mm, no, no, that's not good. And... That probably explains, because it sounded like it was in in the bedroom again. That possibly explains why one day, again, because I work on a Friday in the house of my own, I was upstairs, you know, just having a wee in the, in the en suite, and they, the cats were out again just enjoying the garden. There was nothing in the house, and I could see something walking, under under the door you know where you can see footsteps mm -hmm. you can see somebody walking under the yeah I could see something and then it sort of stopped by the door in the middle of the door and I'm thinking there's something the other side of the door and there's nobody in the house and I haven't heard anything I'm just gonna stay in here for a bit longer I'm just gonna I'm gonna clean the bath <laughs> Une um, unexpected bathroom cleaning I mean that's <laughs> uh, I would fr probably really freak out about that Debbie to be honest with you I, yeah I, what it's like is you get you almost get accustomed to something and it was when when everything disappeared at Halloween it was like the absence, you notice the absence of of it. So it, it's it's almost like it's there all the time and you only notice when it's not there. And like I said, I, I will I will poke the bear, I will press the big red button because I want to see what it does. And that's probably gonna finish me off one day. But but I did stay in the bathroom for another 10 minutes until whatever it was had disappeared and then sort of came out and raced downstairs and thought, I'm not going upstairs again until somebody else is in the house. And of course, there's no trace of, of anything. There's no doors unlocked, windows open, n nothing out of place. Nope, nope, no, nope, not at all. Uh, this house is is the middle part of this house is probably 350 years old uh, so it creaks and it makes noise and you know you can hear when somebody's in the house you can hear when the the door you know the door swells so you have to kick the door to get into the house sometimes <laughs> right. maybe you come in the house and you you say I, that I even and even right now though you're sitting in the front part of the house is that the newer part of the home then because it's less active you know it's the old, it's the oldest part oh that's a good point that's the oldest part ah makes me think again you see i you get all these questions don't you what's happening what's happening yeah, why is it, it happening it's always just more questions see cuz i just assumed that you feel more comfortable in the front part because you you just brought up the fact that the center is 350 years old, which is amazing, by the way. So I just thought, oh, okay, so everything on the outside maybe is newer, so that's why there's less activity. Like, but no, it's older. That's interesting. That possibly links to something we were told when we bought the house when we moved in that there is a stream that so there's a hill at the back so the bedroom window actually looks out onto a, onto a hill 
and there is a spring line. There's spring lines all along the base of the hill, and there's a spring that comes out and goes under the house. It wouldn't go under the 350-year-old part. It would go under the new part that they've actually, that, that all the extension is. Oh, wow. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And water is a huge conduit for paranormal activity as well. Yeah, which is why I think this elemental can get back in and out. Mm. Even though we've chased it out, it just goes, whatever, I can get back in. Oh my goodness, that that might be a, a one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle. To be honest, yeah, yes, yeah. I, I, it's only when you said you're sat in the front, and I'm like, no, I'm actually in 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 the oldest part of the house. That is that that is that's good. It's it. The more it happens or the, or the more things that happen, the more you want to find out about it. And mm-hmm. that's what it's done. It's made me want to, to get to the bottom of it. And why? Why is this happening? What is this? What, what's, what's the reason? What, what are these things? I, I, I don't know. They all seem to be connected. Yeah. Yeah, and you've listed what I wrote down four or five or more different what we would call a classic ghost, right? They're always in the same outfits mm-hmm. and they, they seem to be almost mm-hmm. residual hauntings where cuz you you said, "Oh, there's a man up the driveway and then there's um uh, oh, the guy in the green sweater who looks in the back door and then there's the guy at the front door and they're all doing these separate things as if stuck in a a movie reel, right? But I mean, yeah. The, the the fae are known to be tricksters and they love to just kind of mess with people. And obviously that thing that looks in your bedroom window, I'd be on the same plane as you. I'd be going, I'm just not going to look out that window again. I don't, and I don't. When I, say, I, I go into the bedroom and I watch my feet go over to draw the curtains. And I only look up once I've drawn the curtains and nothing can look in the window again. I just, I don't want to look out. I don't want to see it. I was, I had my head hung. I got really quite, thick. I got thick hair and I was trying to dry my hair Saturday. So I had my head hung upside down, trying to get my hair dry underneath. I had my head hung upside down and was like playing around with the hairdryer and was looking out of the window while I was doing it. And I saw, I saw just a glimpse of something outside on the roof again and I just like, oh, I can't deal with this this is daytime and I can see something moving and I'm drying my, my hair mm. well and that's just it isn't it I mean it, a lot of these have been daytime sightings when you're just doing really very mundane things you're not going into the woods with Ouija boards you're just going for walks and going you know down to the end of your yeah. driveway and you're getting touched it always, it always happens almost when you're not thinking about anything, when you're thinking about something. If you know I was drying my hair, you know, I'm driving, I'm driving home, or um, I'm thinking about, you know, what am I going to make for supper, or what about, what's the next job I've got to do? Or I'm thinking about something entirely different, and that's why it makes you jump, and it makes you... Uh, it winds you up so much because you are not expecting it. Debbie, Maybe they get a thrill out of you going, Ugh. Right. Oh, I'm I'm sure that they do. I mean, especially considering the, the different types of things that you guys have seen. Uh, the fact that you got touched while you were driving. Which, oh, well, before I say this, let me ask, were you still on the property in your car while you got touched? No. No, I was driving home from work. So. But we've had things at work. Oh, you've had things at work. Just to you Mm. or to other people that you work with? Um, So, I have, I, I do, I have two jobs 
that's all one, one of which I do at home. And I also have a business and it is a yarn store. So I run a yarn store. My daughter, my youngest daughter helps out in the yarn store as well. And we have had it, it in the yarn store. So I will put everything out on the shelves and everything, turn around and there's balls of yarn in the middle of the floor. And there's no way those there's, things could have rolled there or it, everything is ruled out, essentially. No, no, it's very precisely placed. It comes from the other side of the store. Yeah, because, okay, so that's also very interesting to me. So, because where I was going with that whole car thing is that, you know, we're going off of, now we've, I've heard that there's water that goes under the house and you have the thing down the path and things at the neighbor's house and on roofs and, you know, it's all centered around the land, right? But then I hear mm -hmm. that you get touched in your car and you weren't on the property so I'm like, okay, well, then obviously no. it's very uh, attracted to you, attached to you somehow a little bit, obviously, and you can see more, it sounds, than your husband <laughs> and your daughter. But now I hear you have things going on at your work, but it's not just your work, it's you own it, your business, right? So it's almost like anything yeah. that that you own or that you're attached to, they'll go, oh, well, that's mine too. I can show up there too. Um, yeah, possibly, possibly that makes sense as well, because it, it, yeah, it's just being an a-hole at work, you know, you just like, don't do that. And you, and, and that's when you, when you ask, do you tell it to stop? That's when I tell it to stop. When I'm like, oh, come on, I have just put everything back. Stop doing that and pick it up and put it back on the shelf. And you turn around and something else is in exactly the same spot. Like, don't be, stop it. You get tapping on the window there. You get uh, doors opening of the office. So the office doors will open and you know you've just walked past and shut them or you'll get sort of almost like... Um, Sometimes if you're locking up late at night, you almost get like a coughing noise or something, you know, behind you. Yeah, it, it could just be attached to me. And that's when, because I was coming home from work, I was coming home from the store. And, and that's the last time that it tapped me on that. And it was a real sort of like pat, like, <laughs> like you would pat a dog pat on the top of the head and then it was playing around with my hair at the back it's like don't do that I'm driving stop it yeah I would have immediately thought of a spider and I probably would have crashed the car because I'm <laughs> I'm extremely dramatic about spiders I'm the same way I do not like them at all uh I they really uh, just they yeah. focus in on you a whole lot yeah yeah well I did I spent the next like 10 miles thinking there was a spider on my hair and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd be, like, I'd be, not to, like, yeah. yeah, I'd be probably pulling over and looking like the, the crazy lady, like, you know, patting her clothes down and, you know, rubbing the head and everything looking all cuckoo. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So what about your husband? What have you said that you, he has actually started to see things in the home. What's going on with that? Uh, he saw the house uh, a couple of weeks ago um, for the first time because we were saying, oh, it's a house house, we can see it, we can see it. And he, uh, this was me and my daughter, and he was like, mm, no, and I don't really want to have anything to do with this. And then it scooted out from underneath the bed and in between us. And uh, that Screwed with his head for a couple of weeks. What what did he say? He was, yeah, what did he say about that incident? Did he speak immediately after? Like, okay, now I have seen the house elf. I believe you. I know it's here. He took the bedroom bedroom apart trying to find it. Mm. 
And he thinks, talking about it afterwards, he thinks now he's possibly seen it on other occasions and just thought it was the cat. Ah. Because it's small and, and looks like the cat. Right. Without ears. Why does it have to, it sounds like it stays under the bed a lot. I would really dislike that. It likes the kitchen. It likes the kitchen. It's, it likes the top of the freezer. It likes the sauce sitting on top of the saucepan rack. That's why I tend to see it. It likes, it, it's been in the bedroom a couple of times. But mainly I've seen it on top of the chest of drawers. So it likes sort of sitting and like watching what's going on. Uh, and then, of course, when I, I had COVID and it was sat almost pressed up against my feet. Almost, though. It wasn't touching you? You didn't feel it? I didn't feel it. I only looked down and saw it sat next to my feet. Um, I can't. T it looked as though it was pressed up against my foot, but I can't tell you if it was. I, I couldn't feel it. I couldn't tell you if it was touching. I couldn't feel it at all. And the moment I glanced down and saw it, blinked and it was gone. I'm imagining the movie Ghost right now where Patrick Swayze mm -hmm. is down in the subway, right? And he's trying to learn to yep. push, push the penny and he's trying to interact with things around him uh, because he's got to, you know, he's got to show Demi Moore. He's still around. Anyway... Does this house elf, you know, if he's up on top of things in the kitchen, does he ever knock something over? That's what I wonder happens with the dresser and the mug. Because there was, um, so there was the sound of something like clunking or rustling. And I went into the kitchen and saw the mug moving and then went and grabbed my iPad and went back into the kitchen. I could hear a sound. It, it sounded like, so at the back hall of the kitchen and the back hall of the dining room, where I tend to work from home, has got win uh, the dining room has got windows. There is like a passageway and I have purposely grown brambles all the way along this passageway because they're thorny and I don't want people or things or whatever it is going down the back of the house and staring in the window at me because that's where the ghosts were staring in the window and they carried on staring in the window horrible prickly thorns mean nothing to them but it sounded like when I was watching the the mug it sounded like a, something was walking down that passageway. It sounded like a human-sized person walking down that passageway carrying a cardboard box. You know, when you're trying to manoeuvre a cardboard box through a tight space, you make that sort of hollow, clunky, rubbing sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you, do, do you know the sound? It sounded like that on the back wall. I, wonder, I do wonder if if it was up high, because it likes to sit up high and whether it was on the dresser. And that's why on its way down, that was what had caused the mug to swing. But it was really weird because it was just one mug on a very much, you, you, saw, you saw the pictures, that's a crowded dresser. <laughs> There's loads of crap on there, isn't there? I mean, yeah, it looks like any, any normal, you know, dining room, um, not an armoire. Oh, what would we call it here? I can't even think of the word. But yeah, it's mm -hmm. got dishes on it and mugs hanging. And like I said, I will make sure to, I'm going to create, I'll place it into YouTube so I can create an easily shareable link so that people can watch that. But yeah, it's a little strange that it's just the one mug just swinging away. And it went on for, I mean, ages. I kept going, is this thing ever going to stop? It just doesn't stop. Yeah, I stopped it. Yeah. I stopped it about three minutes. And and I it had taken, I heard the noise, gone into the kitchen, seen that, come back out into the dining room, grabbed my iPad, taken it out of its case so I could get the the camera to work, and gone back in. So probably that was probably five minutes of swinging backwards and forwards. 
I, I just think it was possibly the house elves that did that. It definitely seems to get around the the entire house, <laughs> and that actually segues into my next point, and maybe a you know a question essentially is you have so much going on inside and outside, but seemingly around the entire house and in the entire house, like nothing is, uh, well, you did say though that you're sitting in the front because it seems a little better. So ixnay most of what I just said, Mm -hmm. but there is somewhat of a point here. Is there, let's go inside and outside. What is the most active, if you could, I don't even know if this is possible, if you could narrow down inside and just outside, not not the path and all that, but just on the perimeter of the home and then inside the home, what would you pinpoint as being the most active uh, part of each one of those sections inside and then the perimeter of the home? Is there a such thing? Yeah, there is. And it is the dining room. So the dining room and the has it's a single story and it has the roof on that we see the things sat on looking in the bedroom window. Then that is side on to the front door and the front of the house. And you see that's where the boiler suited man is, the ghosts look in the window of the dining room. They it looks over the driveway and it looks onto the back of the the garden as well, all of which we see things, all of which have had things go on. So I'd say that that place. Okay. Mm. That's the newest part of the house. That was built in two thousand and eleven. The dining room section. But that's also where, obviously, is that where the mug swinging video was filmed? Uh, that's the next door room. So you go that that's next to that. the The mug swinging was in the kitchen, probably three three feet away from where the the dining room is. Okay, it's the next door room. But um, I have had so I've been again working in the so I work in the dining room. One, because it's got a table and, you know, I'm working on a computer. And the so if I'm working on the computer, the entrance to the kitchen is on my left. It's about three foot to the door into the kitchen. There's two windows at the back of me. I have had, when I've been working, there's a, we've got a picture on the wall it has been, it just detached itself from the wall and then there has been a scuffling like sound of footsteps skittering from the dining room into the kitchen. Scared the life out of me. I don't know if it's worse to have like little scuttling things, you know, ground level or on the floor or Mm -hmm. to have full size man-like figures standing. I don't know what's I mean, it's all not that great. No, it's not. The, the the ghost, the one in the boiler suit, looks like a grandpa, and he looks like you could just talk to him. He is that lifelike. And all he does is peer in the window. You go and open the door, and there's no one there. He's got like curly, graying, salt and pepper hair and a a blue boiler suit on. And he's probably like mid 60s in in age. The the green sweater that you see in the windows at the back of the dining room is just a green sweater. There's nothing else. (laughs) And that I don't like. Where's the rest of it? Oh, so it's just a torso, essentially? Yeah, mm. yeah. Yes. Oh, how lovely for you. That's nice to see. I know. That's really, really nice. So a couple things about yeah. about these 
these guys. And then you got the driveway guy, right? And then you got the guy that was at your neighbor's house. So we have all these different entities or ghosts, whatever you want to call them. Has any of them, oh, I think you did say, they they do interact in, in, in that you, haven't you made eye contact with one or more of them at some point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they're not, yeah. this is not a residual situation, at least not with all of them. Some of them are interactive. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah. The the one who was on the neighbor's driveway, we made eye contact. I, I made eye contact with him and uh, okay. it was a look of pure hate. That's the one. Me. Okay, right. That's the one that, that you got that feeling about. Another question for you. Mm-hmm. Not that you... Again, not that any of us really have the answers, but here's another question. Why are all the ghosts men? I don't know. I actually don't know. And we talked about this, and there is no one that we recognize as a relative or a friend. So they weren't here before the elemental thing we had in the house. We just we never saw them and it's only been since then we have no idea who these are we have no idea how long they've been around whether they've been drawn in by whatever's been happening whether it has what's happened has opened up an ability to see these things although I could see them before we, I mean, we've had long conversations about the, the man on the driveway, the, the other, like, the, he's, a, he's a young man. He's in his sort of 30s, and he wears a white shirt and jeans. We've all seen him. I've just seen the back of him, and everybody else has seen him. And we actually thought, because we watched him for for months walking up the driveway, then disappearing between the cars and and we've all actually gone out and just thought is that someone trying to steal a car or is that somebody doing something with a car and he's just not there we have no idea who this person is why they're attracted to her house why they're here why they want to be seen do they just do they just have they just been attracted to the energy and just want to be acknowledged? Don't know. What's been the worst thing for you? Was it the incident very, very recently with Olivia? Or, I mean, is that on par with something else? What's been maybe the worst thing for you? Yeah, yesterday with Olivia has really upset me. I, yeah, I've sort of forgotten them, right? but because they know where you are and they know who you are. I, every single thing that happens, you, because it's happening time and time again, you sort of get semi used to it. I don't like all of a sudden having my head patted I don't like a ghost just peering in the window when I'm not expecting it I also don't like there there has been a couple of times when I looked into the garden and there is somebody standing there wearing a suit just staring at the house that's what I don't like it, yeah it just seems very like, very uh it's invasive, it's in your face, and it's for a, to look out and see a man just staring at your house, it's aggressive. Mm. It seems aggressive. It is. Yeah. It's, it's as though you're being um, spied on, and where he stands, he stands in the back, you know, where you can't get unless you are in our property. Mm. So he stands and stares at the back of the house. It stares at the bedroom window, stares at the dining room. And you catch the sight of him and you you look down and look up again and he's gone. 
I'm just trying to think what else I don't like. There were several things that I don't like. I, um, I think I'm quite, um, I would say, scared of the of this the thing in the past because I think that Fay or something to do with Fay and it is we don't understand those at all, right? And we have no idea about them at all. And we live about 20 miles from Glastonbury. And there are an awful lot of people here who think that fairies and the fae are lovely and sparkly and pink. And isn't it wonderful to have fairies? And you just sort of go, no, not at all. You do not realize you're like, come and walk down my path on my property, and then you you'll see the little flitting little sparkly fairies, and see what if your opinion changes, right? Yeah, yeah. What you think of sparkly fairies have their own agenda, and we're not part of it. We're we're used for their agenda. Well, Debbie, um, I I know that you've heard Pam's encounters on my show. Hmm. And, you know, she would see, not only would she, you know, go to a Walmart or something and see black masses on people's backs and things, but she would also, on her own property, in the backyard, I remember this very vividly when she said it on the show, she saw a female, essentially a fae, uh, I think this one was had, had no clothes, but it had very sharp, pointy, like shark-like teeth. And I'm just going, mm-hmm. this is horrible. This is horrible for this lady to be seeing this on her own property. And again, right in her backyard, just like you guys. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, they can be menacing. And I think they are menacing. They've got their own agenda. There was one part when we were walking down the the path with the holly by the time I mean that path is probably three miles from our house and we got home and I was still talking about it my husband had no idea what I was talking about it was almost as though they had you know people talk about glamour don't they it's almost as though they had thrown this like glamour at him to make him forget and when I said well you said we were flanked and it and he it all came back to him and he was like oh my god yes I did yes I did how did I forget that why why was that a blank in my mind I don't go out to look for the fae or to have these instances I quite agree with Pam on that I don't know if you've listened to this one. And let me let me look up which episode it is really quickly on my phone. Okay. Uh, it is one it, titled Zoo Planet. It was episode 154. And he was, it was when he was younger and they were in their teens and he's out playing hide and seek with his cousins at his grandma's house. And his cousin ran mm-hmm. by this bush. And the bush, essentially, you were talking about portals or earlier, which people can laugh about portals, but look them up. They're a real thing. Uh, a, a bush opened up. You keep talking about this holly, and mm-hmm. it, it, it jogged my memory. A bush essentially opened up, and there's a, a space there that wasn't there. It's not a bush anymore. And this thing comes out of the bush, grabs his cousin, takes him right into the, the portal, the bush. It's supposed to be a bush. Mm-hmm. He's gone until later that evening or into the next day i forget but he this my guest then goes over to his uh his aunt's house they all lived in the same area and said oh you know he didn't want to get his cousin in trouble um so he just said oh did so and so what time did he get home oh yeah he's fine he's here uh which stunned Uh my guest because uh you know he hadn't heard anything from the cousin he just thought it was it terrified him he went to ask the cousin where did you go what happened to you and at first the cousin because the the 
the aunt or the grandma, I, I forget that part. The aunt or the grandma is standing right there. So he says, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Let's just go outside and, and play. Well, mm-hmm. they're getting to the door and the cousin like turns around and gives my guest, he said it was the most horrific knowing smile that he's ever seen. And he truly uh-huh. feels like to this day that, you know, either it's just not his cousin anymore or... Or something is now mm-hmm. attached to the cousin. And he's not saying that it's a direct result. It could be, but we don't know, right? But his cousin has been plagued with, I mean, such strange ailments that the doctors didn't even know what was wrong with him. He would go from being able to walk to being wheelchair bound and then being able to walk again. And they have no idea why. So anyway, that just jogged really? my, yeah, that jogged my memory. Uh, and I'm not assuming any of that is tied in with what you're saying. I just, we're talking about foliage and, you know, being out in nature and I, you know, there's water around and my goodness, the water going right under your house is really, really something to me. Mm -hmm. That is stunning. So anyway, sorry, sidetracked, but that, that got me thinking of that holly that keeps growing on its own really, really quickly. And they get these, this entity looking at you from the holly so that that scares me yeah yeah and that path we've seen the portal or i've seen the portal open and it was like a black pulsating like sun you know like a sun ray on um art deco houses Mm -hmm. that sun ray pattern it was like that and it was black and it was pulsing and that's where that invisible elemental came out and I could see the footsteps kicked up in the leaf litter as it walked towards us. Okay, see, now, now uh, I'm, I'm going to have to go back and listen to Zoo Planet and see if, I, I don't remember if he's, you know, if he described what it looked like when it opened up before this thing came out and grabbed his cousin. But I need to go back and re-listen to that now. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I will definitely have to have a listen. And ooh, you you would think oh this person hasn't come back out, have they? Or they've got ooh, that's awful. That does give you the creeps, doesn't yeah. it? Oh my gosh. It's a bit like we had last year, last summer, there was um there was like a craft fair going on. So we had lots of people coming into the shop as well. And towards the end of the day, I'd had, you know, like half a cup of cold coffee because we were so busy all day. And I'm just standing there and there's people coming in. And this lady came in who was, I suppose, she looked mid-70s. She dressed all in pink and she made a beeline for me. She didn't look at anything else. She made a beeline for me, came straight up to me and engaged me in conversation. She said, do you dream? like really weird yeah do you dream in color yeah and then she said i knew you could see them or it and i couldn't hear whether it was them or it because it was we all had masks on and that gave me the creeps. don't come in don't make a beeline for me and then don't tell me that i knew you can see them or it mm. Either one, not good. No. Again, this is our second discussion about this, so I'm just hoping that things don't really start to to ramp up for you guys. And it's already there's already so much going on. Yeah. Um, if it does, it does. I will uh, make sure I have a lot of iron about my person and. Um, I think what I don't like, I don't like it when it happens when you're on your own yeah. or when you, it's, when you least expect it, that's the thing I don't like. So we had, the front door is at the side and then there's French doors which go into the dining room with doors at the back. And then we've got one of those plastic, um, you know, the bike shed. Cat used to love sitting on the single story roof and basking in the sunshine and then jumping off onto the bike shed 
and onto the steps down to the front door. They hadn't been on the roof very much at all for the last year. I was going to work and I was on my own and I just stepped out and was locking the door. So I was locking the door and I've got to go across the gravel and up the stairs past this plastic bike shed. And there was the sound of this doodonk of something that I couldn't see jumping off the roof onto the bike shed. And I had to walk past it and I had to walk within a foot of it. That's what I didn't like. And I didn't like that it sounded about five or six times heavier than the cat jumping, doing the same movement. Or when it messes with your daughter. That's not good either. That Olivia yesterday just, I, I, when we universally call her Wiggy and everyone calls her Wiggy and it was, they know her name, they know who we are, that's scary. I've got another hypothetical for you. Mm -hmm. Do you think if you guys ever moved that it would all end? No. No, I don't think it would. I think I feel sometimes like you're marked. I think that when you see or feel these things, you see or feel these things. We were visiting my sister um, maybe three weeks ago and she lives in Cornwall. She has a ghost. So, but, so she's got a modern house and it's got a field at the back and then she was saying there's a ghost that goes past the front window and this is sometimes when I think it's genetic and it goes in families so we were there was myself and my husband and her and her husband and we sat in front of these windows because she was talking about this ghost and it went past the front windows and both myself and my sister could see it but our husbands couldn't. And it was a little man in Tudor costume and he was carrying something. Mm. But she was saying, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on in the, the field. I don't like the field at the moment. So I went up and, and I'm like, you know, like, uh, yeah, I'll poke the bear. I'll, I'll just go and sort out what's going on. So she said, I don't like that part of the field. It feels funny at the moment. And I stepped into the corner of this field and a voice in my ear, a male voice said, you are welcome, but I will come back with thee. Right? Mm. Okay. Okay. Do you know what? I'm going to clear this acre field in uh, slightly under two minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> And again, all all male stuff, male voice, uh, the the small figure outside her yep. window is a male. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm just trying to think if I've ever, if I've ever seen, well, I think the ghost I heard when I was student nurse, I think was female. I think I was a, a baby uh, girl. Just trying to think. When we lived in, so we lived in, um, we've lived all over with my husband's job, and I'm just trying to think. They are mostly all male. That's weird. But I got the sense that this thing behind the holly wasn't male, was female, mm. almost like a queen or something. I would, Which, I would there's, just there's I'd, more questions than there's answers. Yeah, oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I would just make sure never to go close to the holly. Uh, and I would, if you don't mind, Debbie, no rush, of course, but it, if you get a moment mm -hmm. to listen to Zoo Planet, Zoo Planet, if I oh, could talk, I, will. I would like for you to hear that and see if you think there's any similarities there. Because it was a long time ago that I talked to him, so I know I'm, I'm leaving a whole bunch of details out, and there might be one detail in there that just really, you know, you're like, oh my goodness, that that is, yeah, just something that what, might stick out to you. What color? What colour was the portal? 
That's what I'm, that's what I don't want to, I don't want to speak to that. Cause I, I, I want to say it was yeah. just this big black void, but that might just be my mind yeah. going there. Um, so I don't want to say, I, I don't remember what color that was. I, the one in the, the one in the past was black. Right. Um, but last summer we had electric blue ellipses. One was vertical, one was horizontal. But we, but that both my myself and my daughter saw open up in our neighbor's garden. They were probably six or seven feet round. They were electric blue, and I was once in the, in the room where I'm sitting in there, and the way it was at the front of the house, and you, there was electric blue flash, and I'm just thinking, I wonder if that was another one opening up. And she she had her dog was just barking at nothing. Could her dog see things? I don't know. Yeah, I think uh, they I think they see a whole lot more than we do. I mean, look what happened with your three cats, oh right? I mean, you, you probably good that you couldn't see what the heck was at the top of the stairs. I think you see enough. <laughs> no. Uh, random. I guess I... Oh my gosh, yeah. Some things you're probably like, thank you for not manifesting in front of me. That was nice of you. Thank you so much. Have you ever seen any lights in the woods or what would look like a campfire? Somewhere that maybe, you know, it could be far away or close, just a random camp. Not, I don't know why someone would be having a campfire, but I've heard of stories like this, right? Or I've heard of people going, there was a campfire in the woods and I try walking towards it and I can never reach it. You know, they're, they're going to investigate and they can never get there. Have you ever seen any lights or quote unquote campfires in the woods? No, not that I can not that I can remember. No, I'm just trying to think whether I've seen any lights or anything like that. I've seen a couple of things in the sky, which I can't explain, but that was at different different times. One from this house, actually. So we were, because I, I, as I said, we we're about 20 miles from Glastonbury, and our eldest daughter was going was at the festival was actually and we were looking towards Glastonbury going oh yeah she's having a really good time and looked over in the direction of Glastonbury and there was a silver like almost like a blimp shaped object up in the sky and it kept changing shape and we got bored in the end. We watched it for about 20 minutes, half an hour, and we looked at it through binoculars, and it was just, it was oval, but then kept changing shape, so it had lumps come out, and it was just stationary in the direction of Glastonbury. It was there for about 20 minutes that we were looking at it, and then we just, you know, had things to do, so we carried on. Um, and then there's one other thing I've seen in the sky, which I could not explain. Um, as a teenager, I lived, probably under 10 miles from Lake and Heath, Milton Hall, Airfield. And this was when I was a student nurse. And I was out, because I had a car. I was one of the few student nurses who had a car. I used to get sent out miles out. Every, you know, far assignment, I would get sent to it. So I'd been sent out almost down to near where my parents live by Lake Neath and Milton Hall out on the district and it was a twilight shift so you finished at sort of 11 o'clock at night and I thought you know what I'm closer to my parents house than I am to like their hospital so I'll spend the night at my parents house and I was coming back over towards them and up in the sky it was one of those nights where you've got a really bright moon and really uh it silhouettes the clouds you know the sort of that you get these big bubbly clouds and everything else is bright moonlight and starlight um so i was driving along i was the only person uh, i could see and behind the cloud First of all, I thought that it was an aircraft from Lake Neath that was in trouble because there was sparks and um, almost like flames 
coming out from behind a cloud. And then it was just like, do you remember the old Flash Gordon, like 1920s, 1930s film mm-hmm. when they had the rocket ship? Yes. And it's got like the, it's got the, 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 the bit shooting out at the back, like a sparkler. It was like a sparkler coming out from two sides of the, this cloud. And there was, I had to drive under it to get home. I had to drive under this cloud. It didn't move from behind the cloud. It didn't, the cloud didn't move. I've never seen anything like it before or since. It was very still, everything else. And I don't know. I don't know whether it was ball lightning. I don't know whether it was atmospheric thing. Because we lived there when I was a teenager and I was so used to aircraft, um, I know what the sound of aircraft was like and I know what the sound of USAF aircraft was like and that's when they had the stealth bomber actually stationed there mm-hmm. and to take off once a week and everybody knew when it took off because it had a different sound from any other aircraft. So I don't know what that was. That's about the only thing I've seen in the air. Um, yeah, good old good old Lake and Heath. That's my original neck of the woods. Is Lake and Heath? I was there in, uh, from eighty to uh, eighty two. So yeah, okay. So in closing here, and shame on me for not at least mm-hmm. going because I listened to the first part of three eleven. I should have listened to the end. Did we put out a call for anybody? to come and try to help out with this situation? Would you like help with this situation? I cannot remember if we covered um, that or not. I I think we did. Um, I'm quite happy if people would like to come and help. What it's done is it's made me want to find out more. It's made me want to question. It's made me want to... So I've been keeping a diary. It's made me want to try and read around the subject if you can read around the subject I don't think that I um, in any way have a clue about what's going on apart from we're not in charge at all and that these things are connected and they know where you are so those are the only things I think I know yeah, so anybody in or around Somerset, UK, that would be interested in getting involved in this somehow, get in touch with me, Shannon, at IntoTheFrayRadio.com, or, of course, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm on, I'm on all the usual suspects, so please just get in touch, because as you can tell, this is an ongoing situation with Debbie and her family, and it would be nice to have uh, maybe some corroboration maybe some answers and maybe even tamp the activity down a little bit i'm sure that debbie would appreciate that very much it'd be nice to uh to take a wee and not have to worry about something uh keeping you in the bathroom (laughs) for another 15 minutes or half hour to clean the bathroom when it was already so clean right i mean that would be nice Yeah, it was probably going, go on, you need to clean that. (laughs) I would like to think I'm fairly brave, but there's some things that I'm just like, I'm going to leave that. No, you sound very (laughs) brave. You sound very brave. But I, I do agree in that I'm sure that when it goes on almost on the daily, you know, you just, it all kind of gets lumped together and it's some some of it's annoying and some of it does scare you. And then the other stuff you probably just halfway don't even notice anymore. So well, yeah, again, guys, yeah. this is the call to action. We've had these before. I do love when I have somebody that is willing to come back for an update show. I don't get that a lot. So this has been a wonderful catch up. Although, uh, oh. al- albeit a pretty terrifying one at some aspects, Debbie. Oh, and I wanted to say before we got off the old horn here, thank you for being one of my Patreon members. It's really nice to have you over there Aww. with everybody. It's such a, a we're a really good group over there, and I just we have a good time, and it's such an interactive thing that uh, we get on all kinds of different subjects. And 
uh, you know, I know that you have been on the Patreon Discord talking about some of this stuff, at least. And now I know that the Patreon members are going to go, yes, Debbie finally came back on because there's been a lot of discussion about Faye. I mean, it's it's a hot topic and uh, you've got an awful lot going on there. So, yeah, thank you. That was my long winded. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well, thank you for allowing me to come back and update you all. And I'm quite happy to answer any questions if I can answer any questions because I just want to find out you know it it you either don't want to talk about it again ever or you want to find out and it sparks that that sort of you know interest that you need to find out what's going on well, and that's what it's done with me and i know that you will but keep me in the loop i know it's it's evening time there night time there now so hopefully you'll be able to get a good night's sleep with nothing skittering around on the floor but keep me in the loop if, if things go down I will um do. and i will do yeah and i will also i think i might actually put a post up online as well as far as kind of a call to action see if anybody's around there that would maybe have some insight into some of these things and if they wanted to uh, pop by, um, you know, if there's a group out there or whatever it might be, uh, we can kind of decide on that uh, together and I'll, I'll try to help. Yeah. Just kind of vet, vet people a little bit before we do any of that. But yes. Well, Debbie, thank you so much for coming back on with me. Thank you. Thank you for having me back on.